Do you know somebody who loves presents, whether it's birthdays or Christmas, they absolutely love presents. But somehow, no matter how many gifts you give them, it just doesn't seem like enough. Well, today we're going to be finding out about another person who's like that, the king in our story today, and what happens when he is faced with this weakness and the lesson he learns in the process in The Quiltmaker's Gift by Jeff Brumbaugh, illustrated by Gail DeMartin. And we'll learn more right after this. In a world where... Reading was fun? Don't forget your imagination hat! And enjoy the show! Super Readers, Blue Raspberry here. Today is Monday Fun Day, which means today is the very first debut of Read with Blue Raspberry on this fantastic morning. You're going to get rid of the imagination zone. First thing we do is we shake everything out. Breathe in. We breathe out. And close your eyes. Imagine yourself entering into this imagination land. And then we're going to put on our imagination hats, and we are going to get started. The Quiltmaker's Gift, story by Jeff Brumbaugh, pictures by Gail DeMarkin, Scholastic Press, New York, copyright 2000. For Marcia, for the gift of herself has given me everything, to be with love. There once was a quilt maker who kept a house in the big blue mountains, way up high. Even the oldest great-grandfather could not remember a time when she was not up there, sewing away day after day. Here and there and whenever the sun warmed the earth, it said she made the prettiest quilts anyone had ever seen. The blues can't seem to come from the deepest parts of the ocean. The whites from the northern north snow and the greens and purples from the most abundant wildflowers. Ah, and the orange and pinks from the most beautiful sunsets. Some said there was magic in her fingertips. Some whispered that her needles and cloths were gifts from the bewitched. And still others said the quilts fell from the earth on the wings of passing angels. People climbed to their mountains, packs bursting with gold helping to buy one of the wonderful quilts. But the woman, Mm -mm. would not sell them. I give my quilts to those who are poor or homeless, she told all who knocked on her door. They are not for the rich. On the darkest and coldest nights, the woman would make her way down the mountain to the town below. There she would wander the cobblestone streets until she came upon someone sleeping outside in the chill. Then she would take a newly finished quilt from her pack wrap it around their shivering shoulders, tuck them in tight, and tiptoe away. The very next morning, with a steaming cup of blackberry tea, she would begin a new quilt. Now, at this time, there also lived a very powerful and greedy king who liked nothing better than to receive presents. The hundreds and thousands of beautiful gifts he got for Christmas and his birthday were never enough. So, a law was passed that the king would celebrate his birthday twice a year. When that still wasn't enough, he ordered the soldiers to search the kingdom for those few people who had not given him a gift. Over the king had come to own almost all the prettiest things in the world. Throughout the castle, from top to bottom, in drawers and on shelves, in boxes and in trunks and in closets and in sacks, the king's countless things were stacked. Things that shimmered. Things that glittered, things that glowed, things whimsical and practical, things mysterious and magical. So many, many things that the king kept a list of all of the list of things he owned. And yet, with all those marvelous treasures, the king never smiled. He was not happy at all. Somewhere there must be that one beautiful thing will finally make me happy, he was often heard to say, and I will have it. One day, a soldier rushed into the palace, sir, yes, sir, with, a, with news about a magical quilt maker who lived in the mountains. The king stamped his foot. Hm, how 
how is it that this person has never given me one of her quilts as a gift? He demanded. She only makes them for the poor, your majesty, the king replied, and she will not sell them for any amount of money. Well, we'll see about that, the king roared. Bring me a horse and a thousand soldiers. And they set off, hut, 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 in search of the quilt maker. But when they arrived at her house, the quilt maker merely laughed. <laughs> My quilts are for the poor and needy, and I can see easily that you are neither. I want one of those quilts, the king demanded. It might be the one thing that will finally make me happy. The woman thought for a moment. Hmm. Make presents of everything you own, she said, and then I'll make a quilt for you. With each gift you give, I'll sew another piece. When at last all your things are gone, your quilt will be finished. Give away all my wonderful treasures, cried the king. I don't give things away, I take them. And with that, he orders to seize the beautiful star quilt from the quilt maker. They rushed upon her. She tossed the quilt out the window, and a great gust of wind <sighs> carried it away. The king was now very angry. He marched the woman down through the, the town and up another mountain where he had his royal iron maker shape a thick bracelet of iron. Then they chained her to a rock doom, 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 to the cave of a sleeping bear. <gasps> once more the king asked for a quilt and once more mm -mm, she refused. Very well then, the king replied. I'll leave you here. When the bear awakens, I'm sure he'll make a fine breakfast of you. Later, when the bear's eyes opened and he saw the woman in his cave, he stood up on his hind legs and gave a roar that rattled her bones. She looked up at him and sadly shook her head. It's no wonder you're so grouchy, she said. You've got nothing but rocks on which to rest your head at night. Bring me an armful of pine needles and with my shawl, I'll make you a great big pillow. And this is what she did. No one had ever been so kind to the bear before, so he broke the iron bracelet ksh, and asked her to spend the night. Now, although the king was very good at being greedy, he was very bad at being mean. All night he could not sleep thinking about the poor woman in the cave. Oh my, oh my, what have I done? He wailed. So he woke up his soldiers and they all marched in their pajamas to the cave to save her. When they arrived, the king felt the quilt maker and the bear having a breakfast of berries and honey. Now, the king completely forgot about feeling sorry and became angry all over again. He ordered the royal island makers to build an island barely big enough for the woman to stand on her tiptoes. Once again, the king asked for a quilt. And once again, mm -mm, she said no. Very well, the king replied. Tonight, when you're too tired to stand and lie down to sleep, you'll drown. And the king left her alone in the tiny island. Shortly after he left, the king saw a sparrow <laughs> flying across the great lake. A cold, fierce wind was blowing. <sighs> it did not look like the poor bird would make it to shore. The quilt maker called to him <whistles> to rest on her shoulder. The poor, tired bird was shivering, so the woman quickly made him a coat from the scraps of her purple vest. When he'd warmed and the wind had stopped, the bird flew off. But he was very grateful to the quilt maker for what she had done. Soon the sky darkened as the air filled with a huge cloud of sparrows. Thousands of wings beating together, they swooped down, lifted the woman in their tiny little beaks, and carried her safely to shore. Again, that night, the king could not sleep for thinking about the woman alone on the island. Oh my, oh my, what have I done? He wailed. So he woke up his sleepy soldiers again, and they marched in their pajamas down to the lake to set the woman free. But when they arrived, she was sitting on a tree limb, sewing tiny little purple coats for the sparrows. I give up, the king shouted. What must I do for you to give me a quilt? As I said, the woman answered, give away all of the things you own, and I'll sell a quilt for you. And with each gift you give, I'll add another piece to your quilt. I... I can't do that, cried the king. I love all my wonderful, beautiful things. But if they don't make you happy, the woman replied, what good are they? That's true, the king sighed, and he thought about what she had said for a long, 
long time. So long the weeks went by. Oh, all right, he finally murmured. If I must give away my treasures, then I must. The king went to his castle and searched from top to bottom for something he could bear to give away. Frowning, he finally came out with a single marble. But the boy who received it smiled so brightly in return, the king went back for more things. Eventually, he brought out a pile of velvet coats and went about town, giving them to people dressed only in rags. All were so pleased that they marched up and down the streets in a grand parade. But still, <laughs> the king did not smile. Next, the king fetched a hundred waltzing blue Siamese cats and a dozen fish that were as clear as glass. Then, the king ordered his merry-go-round with real horses to be brought out. Children cried with delight and cartwheeled around him. And just the smallest of smiles began to show on the king's face. On and on the quilt maker worked. And piece by piece, the king's quilt grew more and more beautiful. And finally, one day, a weary sparrow flew to her window and perched on her needle. She knew then and there that it was the last messenger. So she put the final stitch in the quilt and started down the mountain in search of the king. After a long search, she finally found him. The king's royal clothes were now in tatters and his toes poked out of his boots. Yet his eyes glittered with joy, and his laugh was wonderful and thunderous. The maker unfolded the king's quilt from her bag. It was so beautiful that hummingbirds and butterflies fluttered about it. Standing on tiptoe, she gently wrapped it around him. What's this? cried the king. As I promised long ago, the woman said, when the day came that you yourself were poor, only then would I give you a quilt. King's great sunny laugh made green apples fall and flowers turned his way. Ha 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 ha! But I am not poor, he said. I may look poor, but in truth my heart is full to bursting, filled with memories of all the happiness I have given and received. I am the richest man I know. Nevertheless, the quilt maker said, I have made this quilt just for you. Thank you, replied the king. I'll take it, but only if you accept a gift from me. There is yet one last treasure I have left to give away. All these years I have saved just for you. And from his rickety, run-down wagon, the king brought out his throne. It's really quite comfortable, he said, and it's just the thing for long days of sewing. By day, the quilt maker sewed the beautiful quilt she would not sell, and at night the king took them into the town. There he searched out the poor and downhearted, never happier when he was giving something away. Visit the quilt maker and the king online at www.quiltmakersgift.com where you will find puzzles and games from the quilt maker's gift, stories of generosity from around the globe, and quilt block lore and quilt activities for all ages, contests and prizes, and conversations with the author and, rep and artist. The end. Well, that is today. That's today's story. For more stories like this, go to your local library or bookstore and check out books of your own. And have your mom or dad, your aunt or uncle, your grandma or grandpa to read stories with you to grow your learning and understanding. Who knows? You might go somewhere fantastic someday. And with that, I am Blue Raspberry saying, so long, guys.